the key to the high power microwave piece is we're looking at the future threat of things like swarming. We found a capability that performed you know, better than some of the other capability and the Army purchased four prototypes after the demonstration that will eventually get into the Army system for us to try and decide if we want to move forward from an Army perspective uh, with that capability. And our next demonstration is focused on Group 3 one-way attack. So looking at different uh, areas out there and, and inviting industry into the process to help us get after this in a more expedient manner. Um, in terms of when you might see uh, high power microwave capability out in the field, or, you know, is that in a couple of years? You know, how long is the, is the assessment process going to be? I'd say it's already the out there. It's already out there. It's already out there. We, we, we have different ways of uh, uh, employing that capability. It could be on a, a standard system or it could be built into some of our uh, mobile system, interceptor type system. So. What are some of the other things that you might be uh, evaluating in terms of technology or uh, you know, buckets of technology like you've been looking at at other rodeos? You, know, you mentioned this next round, you're looking at ways to defeat a Group 3 uh, unmanned aircraft system, one-way attack. Uh, what are some of the other things that you want to be able to evaluate um, going forward that you haven't had a chance yet? Newer uh, technology that we're looking at. Uh, I wouldn't say directed energy is new, but we are really framing around directed energy as a deep magazine opportunity for us, just like high-powered microwave. So as you talk swarming and you highlighted at the beginning, you know, the mass and multiple directed energy sounds like a great way uh, if you get the technology to a point and have the magazine depth to be able to get after multiple and not have to shoot a lot of interceptors mm -hmm. is a great way to go. So we're we're working closely. We've uh, selected the Air Force as our service lead, working closely with the uh, Army Ricto office to deliver a directed energy capability. We have that capability out in the field for operational assessment. And now we're just seeing at what watt, wattage is the right area we want to be at for this particular problem set. Okay, that's interesting. I, I remember you know seeing uh, companies displaying you know, a small right. UAS that they'd taken out with right. a directed energy right. beam. But, um, uh, is there still a hurdle that you have to uh, get through in terms of being able to quickly shoot a variety of, of drones in a swarm um, as opposed to you know holding a beam onto a UAS that, you know that seems to take just a little bit yeah. longer than I think is comfortable. Exactly. So, and, I, and I think as, as technology matures, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have a start point. We've demonstrated success from a start point. It may not be optimal uh, for a large amount uh, of threats, but as the technology matures and, and the team is doing a lot of great work, you know, with the Air Force, uh, RICTO, the Navy and the other services and industry. So as that technology continues to mature, our hope is that we get to that point where we're able to leverage that technology. But by being in on it early, allows us the opportunity to start familiarizing our soldiers with the capability, understanding the operational sustainment constraints, and then as the technology matures, it'll just be a matter of getting the latest and greatest uh, technology on that platform. What do you believe is the future for electronic warfare for uh, you know, aboard drones? Um, you know, what are you seeing already there, and how does that affect what you're looking at in terms of counter UAS? Yeah, I, you know, electronic warfare's uh, already there uh, and being leveraged uh, on drones and, and, and uh, it's it's a natural progression of technology uh, you know so if you have that ability uh, electronic warfare to put it on a uh, platform to extend your reach and capability it's going to happen uh, and everybody's going to probably do it and so we expect to see that continue uh, to uh, escalate and continue to uh, you know maturate into uh, several different type of platforms. And you know that's why when I talk layered approach, you have to have the ability, not only we have electronic warfare counter platforms for that. And so you know if, if you're in that counter production, counter production fight, that's where you have to have a layered approach. Well now maybe you have a kinetic effector that if that electronic warfare system for some reason doesn't work, you have another tool and you're a layer to get after that effector. Um, what are some, some innovative ideas that to take on uh, this, this type of thing? Um, you know, we, I've seen, for instance, active protection systems uh, on vehicles demonstrating 
a counter UIS capability now. Um, so are there ways that you're starting to see um, in terms of being innovative where you can take a system that does something else, but also um, you know, tweak it, software, whatever, to also be a counter UAS system. So maybe a wider variety of platforms in a wider variety of formations have uh, such a capability. How are you thinking Absolutely. about Absolutely. There's two components uh, to your question. So yeah, we have uh, air defense systems that you know, we, we, we look at to uh, help them perform better against a smaller, slow, low, type and same with our radars. And so that's a constant uh, evolving in a lot of our partners. That's what I highlight to them is, you know, you don't have to immediately go look for the next new shiny thing. Look at what you have already, maximize that capability against the threat and then grow uh, what you can from a technology perspective to get after the uh, more evolving threat. And also, yes, absolutely. We're looking at different platforms, different technology. For example, the uh, technology I highlighted to you with the high-powered microwave, you know, it's, it's right now it's, it sits on a gimbal and the Army purchased four of those. But also through the Navy working with the Marines, we're looking at different ways to employ that same type of technology on vehicles. So the technology area uh, is what we're looking at. And then taking that technology area and industry is doing a really good job of saying, hey, here's an innovative way to employ this to maximize the use all the way down to the operator level because I believe they also understand that we have to have this more than central locations. We have to be able to matriculate this all the way down to the uh, uh, user level, individual soldier level. And so innovative ways come out of that.